Hey everyone, today I'll be working on this oil piece called Baby Melon, painted on a wooden panel. And if you want to know how I prepare wood for oil painting, I'm going to leave a link in the description to a video that I made earlier explaining how I do that. But this is basically how I start all of my paintings. I'll use a reference image and create a composition in Photoshop, and then overlay a grid and draw that onto a panel so I have a map of tone and value. I've just started mixing my own colours as well. This will be the first painting where I've mixed all of the flesh tones from the primary colours and titanium white and raw umber. I found that you can make basically any combination of flesh tones from these colours, and I'm going to be making a full video on how I mix these flesh tones soon, so if you're interested, subscribe and stay tuned for that. I'm really trying to technically push myself with this painting. Um, I usually try and paint a la prima, but in the past these paintings have turned out quite two-dimensional. So for Baby Melon I wanted to take more of a careful and considered approach. I wanted to try painting in layers to see if that gives it more of an accurate depiction of what I saw in my mind. Of course the first you know, one or two layers are ugly and unrefined, and sometimes that can be really discouraging, but I guess just like with anything in art you just have to keep going. I usually get discouraged from painting when I can see a large amount of the surface beneath the paint that I've already applied, um, because sometimes it seems like no matter how hard you work, no matter how many hours you put into the painting, the overall image just doesn't change. When I feel like this, I find that blocking in another area of colour um, usually makes it seem like you've made more progress. It's usually a good idea to at least block out the background anyway, because it gives you a much more accurate representation of the tones and the hues in the portrait. So when you're painting the skin tones, they're not being compared to the stark whiteness of the panel, they're being compared to the background. This will give your painting a much more cohesive look. I guess all painting, but especially portraiture, is just about pushing colour and tones back and forth until you've created something realistic, if that's your goal. Blocking in the background also gives you the chance to soften the lines and the transitions between the figure or whatever you've got in your foreground and the background. This helps to imitate your eye's natural ability to focus and can help the piece look much more lifelike. So if you think about in real life, when you're holding a conversation with someone, you aren't looking at the whole person in focus at the same time. Your eyes will naturally select an area to look at directly. Uh, usually this is one of the eyes, and everything else can still be seen, but it's not as clear as that one eye. Uh, all of my art teachers have always told me to paint one eye much more detailed than the other, because it commands the viewer to look at it, just like in the real world. Once the first ugly few layers are out of the way, you finally get to move on to the fun part, which is the glazing and the refining. Glazing is when you add a very thin layer of paint over a dry layer to tweak the colour slightly. And you can glaze by mixing a tiny amount of paint with a lot of medium, or you can just use a tiny amount of paint and use, you know, kind of a dry brush technique. The colour that's added on top is translucent and the colour beneath it can still be seen, but it's through the haze of another colour. This is used to make a lifelike imitation of how light is reflected with human skin. With glazing you can add all of the subtle hues of green and blue and red that are difficult to attain in an a la prima style. For the background of the piece, I wanted to hint at the name and include the colours of watermelon, the pink and the green, but I wanted the bottom of the piece to be filled with plants and life, like a head is just poking above the mess into clarity and calmness. This painting is definitely a celebration of one of my best friends, and you might actually recognise it from my last painting video, Vavoose, which I'll link in the description. The painting is part of a new series of work that is going to be on display and for sale as part of a group show in my hometown in October.
Thank you very much for watching, and if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. If you liked the painting, please hit the like button and share the video, it would really help me out, and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and you want to see more of my art. Bye guys!